Hi, Craig. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Penultimate Conquest podcast, where we talk about everything to do, everything that has to do with the video games industry. Um, I'm your host, Ruben, and today I have quite the roster. And I'm really digging this roster. Um, I have Mike from Kinda NYC. Hi, what's up, Ruben? Thanks for what's having up? me. Thank, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate yeah. it. Um, we have the usual Ryan. Hey, hey, how's it going? It's going good. How about you, buddy? Doing well, doing well. We have the strong nerd. You know, I didn't, I didn't do the math, but it's been pretty, I mean, over a thousand days since we've gotten a new Splinter Cell game. <laughs> I'm still very disappointed. Well, you should not be disappointed because, again, I've told you countless times that game is never, ever going to come out. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. What? I said you shouldn't be <laughs> disappointed Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. because the game is never going to come out. It's all right. If I got Skate 4, you'll get your Splinter Cell. We'll see. That's going to happen. Don't, gonna happen. don't, don't happen. give him false hope, Mike. Don't give him false hope. <laughs> One of those was an actual. <laughs> and, of course, we have the Spider-Man himself. Oh. Vincent. Hey. What's I'm up? trying to shake off downing an entire order of Panera mac and cheese in three minutes. So, oh, my God. Yeah. We'll see how I do. <laughs> okay. We'll see how I do at the end of the podcast, but <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm already feeling it. Well, you know what? Just in case you get, send us your address, and in case we need to call an ambulance, we could just send it over. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll see what I can do. Okay. Today, gentlemen, we are talking about the Spider Man remastered debacle and why people are so upset with it. Mike, let's start off with you. How do sure. you feel about this whole situation of Spider-Man Remastered? Just like everything else in the gaming industry, it's blowing out of proportion and people just need to stop. It's not a big deal. It's fine, guys. It could yeah. be way worse. They could be charging $70 for a remaster, but we're just charging $20. It's fine. I get it. We're in the age where like Cyberpunk has a free upgrade. Assassin's Creed has a free upgrade. It's $20. It looks fucking gorgeous. It's built from the ground up. You're getting a brand new Hot Boy Peter Parker. That's worth 20 bucks. Come on. I don't know about Hot Boy Peter Parker, but we're getting a brand new wow. Peter Parker. He might yeah. be under 18, so watch out. Yeah. <laughs> no, they they confirmed that no he's comment. actually 26. Yeah. He's, he okay. looks like he's 16, though. He looks like he's 16. Oh, he looks very young. To, yeah. The one weird thing with that is that he does look like closer to Miles' age now, so I don't know how they're going to play that off. Granted, we only saw him in the one scene, so... Yeah, hopefully he's like, I don't know, taller or some shit in other scenes. <laughs> Let's hope. Uh, Brian, Lanky how do you feel boy. about this? <sighs> I don't I don't get it. I don't I didn't get it when the, this argument began. I don't get this whole argument of people being mad. Games are going up to $70 flat. It's it makes sense. Like after the advancements in gaming for the past 10, almost 20 years, now, I've been paying 60 bucks from I get 10 more dollars makes sense to me. And especially for this game, it's agree. it's twenty more dollars for the entirety of Spider Man rebuilt, like he said, from the ground up. New Peter Parker, new everything. It looks great. I'm excited. I think it's a great I think it's a great deal. I'd have to agree. Most importantly, a new trophy list and a new platinum trophy. Boom. My I, I will pay twenty dollars for a new right platinum. Next to each other now on my like uh, trophy list. It'll be Spider Man and Spider Man PS5. I yeah. think it'll mm-hmm. well yeah yeah sorry i was gonna say i think it'll be spider-man ps4 but yeah same thing um nick how do you feel about this whole debacle i'm with everybody else here i i'm totally down for it. it's just 20 extra dollars it, the game is brand new new face model uh i mean i don't know why everybody's pissed everything's fine okay it's the internet that's why everybody's pissed <clears throat> well we i'm excited to- i'm a, a, I am excited. I was just going to get the the Miles Morales, but then when they announced that it was just twenty dollars extra for the Spider Man remastered included, I mean, I'm down to spend twenty extra dollars. Yeah, that game was a masterpiece. I don't know why people I are love upset. That game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Why people are upset for twenty bucks? If if you don't want it, don't buy it. It's as simple as that. They're giving you an option not to buy it. And Vincent. honestly, it could be worse because it could be the control situation with the 505 where they're making you pay. The, wh- how much is the ultimate edition of control? Like, I, believe I think it, it is like $65. Yeah. 
Yeah. Or yeah, even more than that. So it could yeah. be worse. It's fine. Yeah. Could be more, much worse. Vincent, what did you think about this whole thing? Um, I think I, I definitely understand. I think the biggest issue for me is when you compare it to smart delivery, it is just a simple fact of um you know, cool. For the games, I, I think the biggest thing is just they they've messed up the marketing. Uh, it's it is a confusion of the additions and this and that, um, which we'll get into later. But like the super short, I'm not mad at it. I'm like you said, twenty bucks is a reasonable price for the game and the DLC. I just think they could have explained a little bit easier about how things are breaking down. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with that. I think that as soon as they showed off Miles Morales, that they should have said, "Hey." Just a heads up, the remastered is def. Well, I would say as soon as they showed off the price, they should have mm. said, just a heads up, you don't need to buy the game to have Miles Morales. You could just get Miles Morales as a standalone. But if you want it, it's 20 bucks extra, which they kind of did, but they kind of like tiptoed around it, which is why everybody, I think, why everybody's just so upset. Also, think, the 20, 20 bucks. Sorry. I think it's their fault with like, as you know, as Vincent said, the marketing is just they didn't really know how to explain it. Like, I think the confusion also comes to like where that comes with this is um, that there is still the backwards compatible version of the game. So you can play the PS4 version for free if you want to. And you yep. will get like those next gen, like what was it? Mark Cerny said boost mode upgrades. So that will happen if you don't want to pay the 20 bucks. And that's where it kind of gets muddied. Also, it, we never really dealt with this before. Like, let's take Last of Us, for example. Like, Last of Us for two, oh, sorry, Last of Us for PS3 wasn't backwards compatible with the PS4. So we got Last of Us remastered. Nobody yeah. bitched about paying another $60 for it a year later. And like, I get it. Yeah, like with smart delivery, it is a hard pill to swallow because Microsoft is fucking killing it all over. But yeah, with smart delivery, especially. And just separate publishers just giving away free upgrades. But I think this is a little more than... And, like, granted, I don't know what the upgrades are going to be for Assassin's Creed or Cyberpunk or any of this kind of stuff, but these upgrades seem a little more substantial than what Cyberpunk and Assassin's Creed are doing. Yeah. Um, I saw something... Well, I saw the comparison video that IGN put up, and it just looks like night and day to me. Yeah. Which mm. is kind of hard to... Like for me, I, I look at resolution and stuff like that, and I can see, I can tell the difference, and I'm sure people, other people can tell the difference. But when you're trying to sell this off to the mom and dad who are going to buy their kid the game, they're going to wonder, I, I wonder how that's going to, how that's going to go with them. Why not just buy the, oh, I could probably find Spider Man PS4 for like 10 bucks, and I'll just get Miles Morales. Yeah, at a GameStop. Yeah, so I I believe Spider Man. I'll look it up as we're talking. But Spider Man Game of the Year Edition is currently twenty, right, for PS4. Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, and is it that maybe just... cheaper right now because of the um... oh the Game of the Generation sale? Yeah, right. I, I should be able to see the standalone price though, even though I have to sign out because I purchased it, obviously. But I, I'm curious: does the Game of the Year Edition come with all the DLC? No, right? Yes. Or is that also? I oh, it does. It does. It does, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, the one I does. Bought. I mean, to be fair, you could skip the DLC, but <laughs> I don't know about that. I think the DLC was pretty good. I like the I DLC. Think it, it was it was fine. Like it was just compared to the main game, it was a little. Eh. One and three I, were good. Two I never good. played any of the DLC, so that's one of the things. Where, like, I have no problem with playing this twenty X dollars. Wouldn't it cost me twenty bucks to get the DLC anyway? Yeah. So, so game of the year edition is forty with the DLC. Okay. And each add on separately, if you do have, or like the season pass or whatever, if you do have the non, you know, the regular edition is 25. So, like, yeah, I'm sure, like, deal. it is. And I'm sure at the end of the year, the PS4 version is going to drop to like kind of go along with the PS5 version, even though you can't buy the PS5 version standalone, which I yeah. think that's the one like kind of ridiculous thing. Yes. Like, you should just be able to buy it separately. Yeah, but, um, yeah, you're right. And I think the reason why it's digital only is because Corona. They probably didn't have enough time sure. to. Digital only, I'm fine with, but like you have to buy miles if you want to purchase this game. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's I that I think is crazy. Digital is whatever. The thing that I'm, I think may happen right. with it is um, that the PS Plus collection, it wouldn't surprise me if in a year or two Spider Man's on there. 
Is it not? No, it's not one of the games. It is not. Okay. No. Yeah, I'd assume it's going to make it on there. So I could see them not selling it for that reason alone. See, but, but this is like an issue with the Plus Collection. Is, isn't is Plus Collection just technically PS4 games upscaled? Yes. So those are just PS4 games that will get boosted with, you know, PS5's boost yep. mode or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Which then gets into confusion when they offer the PS4. <laughs> yeah. Wait, say hey, that again? People, people want backwards compatibility, so this is what you're fucking getting. <laughs> <laughs> um what about the fact that saves won't transfer what do we think about that i'm also fine it, with that it, it's yeah it, it, it's only because it doesn't transfer from PS4 it's just a way they're marketing PS5. yes because the thing is technically they're two separate games correct yeah. that's why it has like a separate trophy list and all that so it makes sense in terms of that. They could have just coordinated it better. Because, like, again, you could technically take your PS4 save right now and with backward compatibility, play that on the PS5. You just can't take your current save to the Game of the Year edition, basically. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Mm -hmm. Again, this is like if I was halfway through Last of Us on PS3 and then me getting pissed that Last of Us Remastered on PS4 didn't take my save. Like... We're used to this, but I again I, I understand people's complaints about like the free upgrades and all this kind of stuff. It, it you know, next gen is about convenience and all this kind of stuff. And some people are doing it fantastically, like Microsoft, and some people are really fucking it up, like 505 and control. Yeah. But this is like I, I think this is fine because it is a different skew, a different trophy list. It's a brand new fucking game. And yep. I think it's totally fair that I, I do understand the folks that like have played it through once and like I heard a lot of complaints like the, the main complaint being like oh I wish I could just play my new game plus on the remastered version that I, I get the frustration but you could you could blaze through a first playthrough of the game like I blaze through the new new game plus in like a few hours to be totally yeah. honest it's like skipping cutscenes and stuff the game isn't that long at the end of the day it's if not. this was a big if this was a multiplayer game that you were like let's say like destiny you had to restart from scratch or something or a 300 hour jrpg i could understand a bit more anger what is this game like 20 hours 25 hours if you take time something like that it's a week about that at, at most a weekend yeah yeah like i remember when it came out beating it in a weekend and never touching it again being like that was fantastic but yeah, uh, they I platinumed it in like a weekend. It's like not that bad. Yeah, it's really not that hard. <laughs> have they said anything about adding like new uh new missions or maybe something at the very end of the game, like a like a new cutscene leading teasing part no. two? I doubt it. No, yeah. technically every cutscene's new with new Peter. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, if they <laughs> went, if they went and replaced it with a new Peter Parker, I'm pretty sure they must have made new cutscenes uh, or something. I, I, the one thing they did add are two new suits. We we know the Andrew Garfield suit is coming back, plus another one, which makes sense with the news today. Why the Andrew Garfield suit's coming back is fucking Jamie Fox and Electro. I'm sorry, who? <laughs> Jamie Fox being Electro again in the MCU. No, no, before that, who's that other guy? Well, uh, Andrew Garfield. Yeah, what? Why is he in this? Hey, the <laughs> <laughs> the suit, Ruben. <laughs> Okay, not, okay, not Andrew right. Garfield, isn't it? Okay, no, no, I <laughs> just my, like he's my third favorite live action Peter Parker. He's my Fair. most hated live action Peter Parker. <laughs> no, all right, so I think he did a good job. I so I think he's a great Spider Man yeah. and a shitty Peter Parker. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, all right. So we're literally all on okay. the same page. Okay, okay. All right. Well, you're you're saying Peter Parker doesn't do random like flip tricks in the middle of a skate park? Uh, Peter Parker. Yo, Peter would, Parker loves Avril Lavigne, dude. Wouldn't be caught dead in a skate park. <laughs> Yo, Peter I'm Parker's thinking. fucking gnarly. He shreds, my dude. Yeah, sure. He was in okay. Tony Hawk. He was um, in Tony which, Hawk. <laughs> which brings the conversation: Who is the best Spider-Man? No, uh, we all know that Tobey Maguire. Tobey Maguire. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. No. Mike, no. no. Just, no. Tobey Maguire. Murder Tom Holland. Sucked. Yeah, Tom. Holland. Sir, sir, how Tom dare Holland. you say yeah. that? Go back and watch from... those fucking Sam Raimi movies. They're oh, terrible. I have. I They're have. amazing. No, They're amazing. Terrible. Spider Man 1 is by far the best introduction of Spider Man we will ever have. It's not Civil War, is Technically, I, I, I wouldn't War. really count Civil War as an introduction. Uh, it's an introduction, but I'm talking about, like, you know, origin. Origin story. Yeah. Bad. 
my dream is to, for Tobey Maguire to become Uncle Ben in the MCU. I'm you waiting for that. that. I'm Wait. waiting for that that live version of Sp- the Spider Verse. The closest we're going, going to ever it get with like Tobey is he's going to show up into into the next into the Spider Verse two. That I'm calling that now. The cartoon, gonna, the animated yeah. movie. Yeah, he's going to show up in the sequel to that. I'm saying, I'm saying he's going to show up in the the third Tom Holland Spider Man movie with Jamie Fox. Yeah. And yeah, Andrew Garfield, with, they're all coming with, back, dude. With Jamie Fox, this this like yeah, multiverse is happening. Yeah, Vincent. Unless they're it, severely it was, retconning the shit, but it was confirmed that Jamie Fox is coming back. Okay. I, okay. All right. All right. Whatever you have to tell yourself. Just today. It's not Just sleep. I'll, I'll, I'll hold out as long as I can. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let him survive on hope alone. <laughs> Apparently. Um... Sweet Jesus. Uh, sorry. Give me one second, guys. Uh, so, um, do we have anything else to say about Spider-Man uh, remastered? Should uh, we talk about how he looks? The new look, the model. Okay. Yeah. Um, what does everybody think? I think I personally think it looks better. Like, yeah, he looks like a generic white boy, but I personally, like, I even, like, playing the game originally, his model always kind of bugged me out a little bit. It just looks weird. Yeah, yeah, I, think, I think it was the eyes. Yeah. This looks, looks like so a gremlin. <laughs> look like a gremlin. Uh, <laughs> I think this looks, yeah, I get it. He looks like a fucking YouTuber. Like, that's, like, the joke going around right now. But I think he looks more human. I think it, it's weird because now the eyes for PS4 were definitely weird. But now, for me, it's the eyes with this guy that creeps me the fuck out. So did you see the other image going around of him? Not the ones that Insomniac released, but it's an image of him like looking up outside in the city streets. It looks so good, like comparatively. I did not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just a different angle. Yeah. Like maybe like it's just that with the shadows and whatnot. Yeah, with the shadows and whatnot, it looks fantastic. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Also, I trust Insomniac. So, oh yeah, with, like, without a doubt, I know what the they're they know what they're doing. Of course. Yeah. Now the reasoning, I, I don't believe. <laughs> mm-hmm. Say it again, Mike. Uh, the reasoning behind it, I don't totally believe. I do think Disney exactly. had something like to say, or it's something to do with Avengers and Spider-Man being in the PS4 version of Avengers, and I don't know. Yeah, somebody had said that in the in uh, our group chat. They were like, "What if this is the model that?" Uh, Square Enix. That was Andrew there. that said that, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Unless, Which, like, maybe they they also acknowledge, like, hey, it doesn't look that great. Let's just, you know, it, or this certain model is not working with ray tracing and shadows and stuff. Let's just redo it. Okay. Who knows? It could be as simple as that, but, you know, the conspiracy theorist in me wants to say it has something to do with Avengers. Absolutely. Disney. Everything has something to do with Avengers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, of course it does. And a horrible game. I play. I previewed it at New York Comic Con. I was like, no, I'm good. Really? Because I also previewed it at New York Comic Con. I was like, oh my god, this is great. I dude, I hated it. (laughs) I wanted to love it so bad. I was like, oh, this is not great. It doesn't feel good. Yeah. And yeah, and then like I downloaded the beta. Like I pre-ordered it for the beta because you pre-ordered it and then canceled it right away just to get my beta code. Yep. Um, and man, I didn't even touch the beta. I was like, nah, I'm like, I don't have any interest. If this thing ends up being like 10 bucks on Black Friday, sure, why not? But yeah. Good good Again, I've it. said this since we've started this podcast. It's the best seven out of ten you'll play all year, and I still stand by that. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Man Eater is the best seven out of ten you'll play all year. Man Eater is, is a nine out of ten that I've played all year. To be fair, yes. Touche. <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> Speaking of free um, upgrades, shout out to Maneater getting a fucking free upgrade. Hell yeah, dude. Let's go. Really? <laughs> yeah, That's dude. Man. I was yeah, I not wait. expecting that. Huh. Give me some ray traced sharks. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Sharks with lasers on their freaking heads? Hell yeah. Let's go. <laughs> oh, God. Um, did anybody else have to say anything about the new Spider Man? The use? last thing I'll say is that everybody complaining is going to buy the game anyway. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we and all like want to play see... the prettiest version of the one of the best games ever. Of course we do. Like you're gonna yeah. buy it. It's fine. And like even even if you don't want to buy it, 
by all means, don't buy it. There's an option for you yeah. not to buy it, which yeah. I, I still don't understand. Mm-hmm. Um, wow, we went through this quicker than I thought we were going to go. Can we want to go into the big topic that Eric wanted to bring us, that he wanted to bring up? Uh, sure. Or what was the big topic? Um, Xbox Games Pass is devaluing gamers' view of games. Aha. That ties into this. <laughs> Okay, let's dive deeper into that. Yeah. Which is an interesting theory. I kind of see where he, why he would say that, but also like why it's not. I think Microsoft buying Bethesda was a huge power move, as I discussed last time on the episode. Um, and I think. Lexus. It, yeah, it makes things more difficult for for sony and nintendo to make like the super mario 3d all-stars i think people are going to if it had come out after the news of bethesda being bought out i think people would have probably reacted the way that they're reacting to spider-man remastered where yeah people were upset about the fact that it wasn't uprest but they weren't that upset. They were still going to buy it. And I think if it had came out after the fact of Bethesda being bought, there would be people like definitely not buying this game, that game. Mm-hmm. Mike, what do you think? Uh, well, first off with Mario, yes, people are going to buy it anyways. And yeah. the game looks fucking gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Like Uprez 64 and Uprez Sunshine looks beautiful on Switch. Yeah. So, like, and honestly, that's all I need. Just I want to play Sunshine and shit on Switch. Cool. Of of course, like the dream is a Mario sixty four remake. Of course, I want that thing on in the Odyssey engine. But it's Nintendo, and Nintendo doesn't have to do that. Um, wh- as far as Game Pass devaluing games, I don't think I agree with. Um, you could kind of say the same argument about PlayStation Plus free games or Xbox games with gold free games, sort of. Or even take it out of games. Like, does Netflix devalue movies? Certain, like, maybe, like, Netflix originals and stuff that are kind of trash. Yes. Yes, I agree. But, like, (laughs) non-Netflix stuff. Like, let's say one of my favorite, like, because we're in spooky season right now. One of my favorite horror films of all time. Or one of my favorite films of all time. The Witch. Like, The Witch is on Amazon Prime. And, like, all A24 stuff is on Amazon Prime right now. Like, does that devalue all the A24 stuff that are, like, some of the best films ever made? I, I think Game Pass is just a great way to make more games accessible to more people especially a lot of indie stuff that people would want to like glance at twice like for example i Mm i um i i'm playing a lot of um oh my god i forgot the name of it it's a really really sick racing game um out no like the hot shot hot shot something hot shot racing i think it's called hot shot no that's it no one that looks like an old like 64 game yeah it's like a it's like a uh crossover between like outrun burnout and cruising usa and like if that wasn't on Game Pass, I no, <laughs> I would no. no it's Horizon Hot Shot Racing. No, it's a Horizon Chase Turbo. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> um, and like if that wasn't on Game Pass, I wouldn't have taken like two fucking looks at it. But like it's le- legitimately like one of my favorite games of the year. And like I don't because I'm playing on Game Pass, I don't think like they they deserve my money or like, they don't deserve my money or anything, you know? Yeah, I could see your point on that. Like once Ryan. it leaves, if it leaves Game Pass, and like I do have the itch to play it, I'm gonna buy it. Yeah. So I, uh, as much as I hate to do this, Eric is one of my nemesis is on this podcast. I have to agree with him with this. I do think it's been devaluing games heavily. People will mm-hmm. always now argue, but Games Pass, but Games Pass, and especially now with um, Microsoft putting out now they put out all their big stuff on there. Every Microsoft massive game, whatever the quadruple a game will be out on games pass day one we're gonna argue that why doesn't so games yeah. should be 15 bucks a month and i'm i don't know about that i think now people get a lot more upset about things that back in the day they wouldn't have that to them now seem anti-consumer but at the end of the day it really isn't just gone so used to this new model of 15 and game pass is a fantastic deal if you haven't been playing games for the past two decades if you're brand new in the games games pass is fantastic yeah but for me right now it's nothing but i play microsoft flight simulator 
I play the random indie that piques my interest and a game that for some reason I have to replay at the moment. Other than that, it's not really like shocking to me. I think mm-hmm. xCloud's super cool. I'm a big fan of the idea of having Games Pass anywhere. Without like having to carry around like a massive computer, I could run it. But other than that, I think it is devaluing the price of games because people are now looking at 15 bucks a month for a brand new AAA game. And And quadruple A. And quadruple A, whatever that fucking means. But we'll find that out one day. Ten years from now. Stop. It's not myself. It's Just not. Stop. That. <laughs> stop putting your hopes up because it's never going to happen. Do you know how hard game. it is for me to watch you every press conference dream so high, then get crushed? I got Dude, that's like me every Nintendo press conference. Yo, where's Star Fox Grand Prix? I know it's real. I know it's a thing. Where the fuck no, is no, it? No, he's right. We saw a report. That means it's real. Just no, like it, it, it is real, but like you're giving like him Jamie false hope. Yeah, Jamie Fox. just like Jamie Fox. Yeah, just like Jamie Fox. <laughs> You're Jamie Foxx him... is playing Star Fox Grand Prix on set right now. Oh, God. <laughs> You're giving him false hope that he doesn't need. Like, he's hey. living in a in a grandeur, in a delusion of grandeur. <laughs> Imran and... Khan says associates of his have played the game. Splinter Cell? <laughs> Just, no, fucking fuck Splinter Cell right now. We're talking. We're talking about Star Fox. <laughs> oh no, no, about- <laughs> I know Star Fox is real. I'm, <laughs> I'm just making sure that we're on the same page. Yeah, yeah. I, I believe Star Fox is eventually going to come out when it. Uh, just I want to throw something out there in the universe. Okay. I feel like we'll get Sam Fisher in Fortnite before we get a Splinter Cell game. That just oh. broke his heart. That I, just I'm broke just like his being heart. brutally honest. <laughs> At this point, I would not be surprised. I can see it. That's the worst. Well, he's part. getting an anime, so I don't see why not. You know, true. Is he going to be in first? I missed out. Say again. <laughs> I, what did Mike say? I missed it. Oh no! Like, I think Sam Fisher is going to be in Fortnite before he gets his own game again. I could see that. Yeah. Oh, oh, I could see that. They use that model from the mobile game. Yeah, he's yeah. a boom. Yeah. There you go, Nick. Uh, I've. <laughs> Nick blasting his eyeballs out. <laughs> what do you think about Games Pass devaluing games? I'm going to hard disagree on that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, same. For 15 bucks a month, you get a lot of games. I mean, you don't have to play every single one of them. Like everybody says, like, why am I going to get the subscription when I'm not going to play every single game on the on the service? For me, what I do is I follow Game Pass um, on Twitter, their official Twitter account, which I believe is a, an amazing Twitter account. Whoever's handling that is, they're always cracking jokes. And, Thank you. Uh, Appreciate it. <laughs> every once a week, I think it's either Tuesday or I feel like it's Wednesday. Every Wednesday, they release a game or two or three, maybe sometimes four or five. Um, and I immediately go to my Game Pass uh, app and I download it and I try it that weekend. And some of them, they stick. Some of them, they don't. Uh, for instance, I did try a game called uh, oof, a little game called uh, the Messenger, which I know oh, a lot yeah. of people a lot of people Great love game. the Messenger. I yeah. beat the whole game. I I've heard of it. I just didn't want to pay money for it. I didn't think it was my type of game, but I did manage to try it because of this service, and I loved it. I did try CrossCode. Hell yeah. I- I'm did. playing CrossCode right now, and I'm I, fucking loving that game. There's a there's an amazing game called The Taurus. I've never heard anybody talk about. It's an amazing adventure game. Uh, it kind of looks like uh, 3D Dot Heroes, if you remember what that game is. I 100,000 achievements scored. I perfect. I got every single achievement on that game. Uh, I did it. I did it one night, one sitting. It's a very short game. Uh, so back to my point, Xbox Game Pass. It's not devaluing games at all. I think it's helping games. What everybody has already said and confirmed about how an indie game goes on there and they are making X amount of money somehow, which I don't know how it's on the service for free, but people are still paying money to buy the game. Um, If they're saying that, I'm going to believe them. I'm not going to believe people who are not in an industry saying like, oh, how are they going to make money? If the developers themselves are saying they are, then they are. Like a big thing we talk about in kind of NYC or a big goal that we have um, is amplifying voices of independent developers and independent video games. And the fact like, yeah, I'm looking at just most popular on Game Pass right now. Yeah. Hotshot Racing is on here. Indie game. 
uh descenders which is fucking dope uh like a really cool bmx game indie game golf with your friends blew up earlier this year because of game pass like game pass is special it's just making it's amplifying games for a more casual audience um and also the fact that like you pay was 120 bucks for the year and i could play all the halos gears forza outer worlds no, not Outer Worlds. Yeah, Outer Worlds. I got confused with Outer Wilds. Um, we all do. Wait, Wasteland 3. And, like, Outer Wilds. and Outer Wilds. Yeah, Outer Wilds is on there. Like, <laughs> as opposed to paying 120 for two PS4 games. You know? Like, yep. it's kind of fucking nuts. So, yeah. Game Pass is rad. Yeah. Vinny, what do you think about Game Pass devaluing uh, video games? Uh, so, it's a hundred percent a great deal and again like many people said if you're like a not like a casual gamer or someone who only plays you know a sports game and noteworthy titles i can't recommend it enough but like in terms of what it's doing for the industry it is a case of yeah i do think it's devaluing games a lot because it's not just a case of well like first off the big issue like for me personally is we can track ps plus and xbox games with gold numbers because we have the subscriptions my big issue with a lot of these streaming services is it's we're only provided the information they tell us so if you know uh halo infinite has 50 million concurrent players they'll say that but if it's not a success they'll just say oh it did well for a day one launch and that's my biggest issue is it's not as transparent and because there's so many games, you have a tendency to for for things to kind of get lost in the fold, unfortunately. Okay. Um, I do have to agree with what Mike said that it's definitely I think it's definitely helping with indies. See, and... yeah, but because uh yeah, because just, just right now, going off of Netflix, just as an example, right? Yeah. You they've added what was it? <laughs> Code Lyoko, Octoberfest, Cam and, uh, Carmen San Diego, Worst Witch, Good Morning Von- Veronica, Call Me By Your Name, American Sniper, Tokyo Ghoul, Your Name, The Condren, and A Pose. Just today. Like, your name? In ter- uh, well, for next was Canada. God damn it. <laughs> I would say Dang Your it. Name, Humble, my, right? favorite, my favorite Halloween movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no, but my point is, like, realistically, you can't watch all of that in one day and that's the issue with like kind of binge culture as a whole is cool netflix has all these varied of great shows but they're only in the conversation for a weekend and then you move on to the next thing so like all right what's next what's next what's next as opposed to games where right now uh you look at sony uh i believe it was june or whatever uh, anyway that month was last of us and then next month was ghost of tsushima so like games can have that longer curtail as opposed to game pass where you're just seeing what's coming next and what kind of that and kind of at least for me personally it does make it more disposable because it's not necessarily it is that mindset of oh i didn't waste any money on this so you're more likely to try it but you're also gonna bounce quicker because you have no physical attachments to this you don't have to say oh i paid 60 dollars or I went to the store and like waited in line. It was like, oh, I pushed a button and downloaded it. So like, you don't have that, um, not buyer's remorse, but like the, you know, the incentive to keep going. I think that has to do with the quality of Xbox's first party. As far as like the Xbox one generation goes, I think once halo infinite drops there, it is going to have that last of us like tail that people are not going to stop talking about it. Same with fable. I think fable is going to be a conversation and an even bigger conversation because of game pass. Yeah. And like, just because we don't know, like, yeah, I, I do understand like the, the argument of like not knowing the numbers and stuff, but like if the game is fun, does it matter? That's true. Well, I, it, yeah. it's just a, in, in terms of the breakdown. Cause I know with, uh, with, with PS Plus and all that, they're basically given a lump sum in advance. So like, hey, here's, this right. is what we gotcha. were assuming to sell, this or whatever, as opposed to Game Pass where that's a lot more back end, where you assume it's a percentage of each uh, download, but like we don't know specifically how each dev are paid off of Game Pass. Like we know they have access, I believe, to like the full amount of the DLC. So any DLC yeah. bought through Game Pass is totally theirs. But we don't, like, I don't believe Microsoft is offering a lump sum off of how long it's on the service. 
but you do also always hear those stories of like i i i can't think of like the last specific example but a dev coming like or i think outer wilds was an example of like holy shit our game sold remarkably well or we did remarkably well because of game pass yeah so it seems like devs are doing that. good because of it yeah like very like same with like mm -hmm. the like with ps plus also like rocket league and fall guys being huge fucking financial successes because of it I, again i i do not understand those deals i don't know how they're making the money but as long as they are making money and getting supported fuck that's yeah. all that matters yeah i think for me the biggest thing is not the indie game i at the end of the day i whatever helps the indie dev the best fantastic but for me it's the triple a that it's the that's where i think the devalue is happening i don't think it's happening with the indie game. games mm. Like I think for indie games and smaller twenty thirty dollar games, fantastic. But I think for the big five releases Microsoft does every year, when people now are going to compare it to Sony's, um, whatever games it puts out that year, they're going to be having that always that fall in the back of the head. Well, I only had to pay mm -hmm. fifteen bucks for this, that kind of deal. I don't think that's a negative and, statement though. <laughs> I, you see, I think it is because that's totally devaluing the whole work that goes into these games because Microsoft has the money to play this game. I, in my mind, it's like, damn, I really want to play Gears 5, but I kind of, I just spent my money on Last of Us. I shouldn't really spend another 60 bucks. Oh, wait, I have Game Pass. Fuck yeah, let's go. That's my thought process. I understand that. And that's coming from a person with two consoles. Touche. Yeah. yeah, fair enough. Yeah. That's the same thought process I have because I have two consoles and a massive PC behind me. Yeah. But for people who are just buying that one or two games a year now, mm -hmm. I think it takes away now from them ever wanting to touch Sony. Mm -hmm. If I would only have the cash to play three to four games, buy three or four games a year, oh, I'd buy Games Pass in an instant. Yeah. And use only that. I don't have to buy jack shit. Other than the 15 bucks a month and dlc for the couple games you play which again i think is a good thing <laughs> like oh like oh you know, well, yeah. this is all good things for the consumer yes but also think it's devaluing gaming as a whole i don't think so mm. the consumer wins in this i don't know if devs and developers do that's the problem but we have heard that they do yeah they do have... though developers have come out and say that they are, they're making money ones who are coming out of it through it i'm talking about now what is this going to do Later down the line, for let's say Sony now making bigger games and all that, are they going to stop putting so much effort into it and all the money when you don't have to because they already have their lock sales in for people who are going to buy those games anyway? When's the downfall going to start to begin here? That's my question. I think it's two things that are completely separate. I don't, my Sony has recently said that they will never probably ever do something remotely close to games pass because they think it devalues their games and i think that if they were ever to do something like that it'll probably be just the bare bones and i don't think they would put up dlc like stuff like that i think we see it already with playstation plus that they give the lump sum first and then however the game does it, it that is what it is but I think that if Sony was ever to do something like Game Pass, it would still not devalue games. I think it'll do perfectly fine for that. And just a reminder, PlayStation Now, as like under like as made fun of as it is, it is pretty fucking rad. I, I jumped in mm. for the year over the spring. I fucking love PlayStation Now. If it could run properly for me, I'd love it. That's the so thing. You can games you can there. download PS4 games. Like people kind of forget that. Yes. Like, and I like over the spring, I um I replayed the two infamous games. I platinumed them. Uh, they ran fantastically. And yeah, I downloaded. Um, I mentioned earlier how I want to try to play Evil Within Two. I just downloaded Evil Within Two thanks to PS Now. Yeah. Like if they remarket that and like change it a little bit, that could be a success. I don't think like apparently it is a success. Like they just don't talk about those numbers that well. But it, whenever they do talk about the numbers, it has a lot of subscribers. It's just, they just bury it a little bit because how this and that's where the conversation is. Um, but I something my big thing for like the PS5 wish list is that they do just lump it in with place uh, with um PS Plus 
and just really promote the thing because it is cool. It's a great right. service that has a lot of fucking cool shit on there. And, and it like there's, there's they're starting to do that a little bit with like uh uh shoe um promising like a, a more like bigger indie mm -hmm. game on yeah. there like every month now and like trying to push it a little bit that way. So hopefully I don't think it'll ever become like the big success that Game Pass is, but it's something, it's a answer. It's not the yeah. answer, but it's a answer. Um, since we're back on the topic of PlayStation, with Bethesda being bought out by Microsoft, let's do some theories. Have we, we... I'm so, let me interrupt. Have we all just decided that they are not going to be exclusive to Xbox, or do people think they are? I, uh, we, um, because they're a hundred percent not going to be exclusive. That's right. I, so I, I think sort Elder of. Sort of. I think Elder Scrolls, Starfield, and Fallout are, will not be exclusive. Everything else, I think so. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think see, everything I'm, I'm will not be exclusive. They're gonna throw everything on Game Pass. See, uh... Okay, guys, guys, guys. One, <laughs> one at a time. One at a time. Nick, go right ahead. They're gonna throw all the Bethesda developed games on Game Pass, and everybody on PlayStation are gonna be looking at that awesome deal of Game Pass, fifteen bucks a month. They can play the brand new seven dollar game for free. Mm -hmm. Instead of buying it seventy dollars over there on PlayStation, so what I think Microsoft is going to do is just throw everything on Game Pass and have everything else also on PlayStation. I mean, it's a win-win for them, and it also gets their money back quicker. And they're not yeah. gonna, they're not gonna, yeah, yeah. They they just spent seven point five billion dollars. They're not gonna was cut it. out Sony from buying their games. I mean, it makes no sense at all. I, I don't know why that. people. I don't know why people are thinking like, "Oh, they're going to be Microsoft exclusive." There's no way there's going to be they're going to be exclusive. No way. I only think that because I think the big three: Fallout, Starfield, and uh, the other one, Elder, Elder Scrolls, Scrolls, the biggest one. Uh, yeah. that I totally forgot. I think those. That's where you get the money back from PlayStation easily. But I don't think yeah. Doom and Dishonored. I think even like historically, Dishonored never really sold well. I don't think Doom really like moves numbers. Like I think it might not be worth putting it on PlayStation. Like just keep it exclusive. Make mm -hmm. it like make the conversation like oh oh my god doom is exclusive now the xbox like that maybe like that word of mouth or that marketing speak is more valuable to them like that plus game pass yeah yeah I mean, who the fuck knows we won't know until yeah we won't know until like two years from now yeah like whenever like i can't even think of what the next bethesda thing other than the big three would be like i guess no not even dishonored because death loop so I, yeah. I guess Wolfenstein would be. I would. Next. I would think Wolfenstein would be next, or yeah. um, a new. I'm hoping for a new Evil Within, but I know Tango's working on. Well, that. yeah, Ghostwire. That one, yeah. Stoked for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I just I don't see you spending seven billion and not making an exclusive because if there's the Xbox looking at it from this gaming perspective, it has. Games Pass, fantastic. It has the speed and the power of that the box has. What's the one thing it's missing? It's missing big name games. You're not getting Halo till I'm going to say mid to late next year. Fable the year after that. You need things to fill that space. And Bethesda mm -hmm. games are the perfect games to have as your mainline exclusive, console selling exclusives for those years. While you're trying to figure out when you can put in things like the next Halo... Well, that, that being said, do, they, do they have anything coming out next year? That's I what I was going to say. Like, I don't, I, I, I am looking up when Wolfenstein 2 came out. That is, Wolfenstein 2 is now three years old. I guess they could be ready what, to pull the trigger on Wolfenstein. They did Youngblood, though. Is Youngblood like, uh, was that like a second team? Like, I, and Youngblood seemed like a half ass effort. Like, no offense to the team that it worked was, on that game, but it was, a, it was the same team. Yeah. Well, also, there was, um, when did the Wolfenstein one DLC came out? Because there was that in between one and two. Uh, it was maybe like a year. It was, I think, it was like a year apart from each other. Yeah, I, I remember they showed it like at E three, and it came out later that year. So the the old blood, which was the DLC, that was twenty fifteen. Uh, and New Order was that the first game? Yeah. So yeah, it was a year. Um, uh, exactly a year after the first game was the DLC. So. I guess if they really fucking push it, they could be ready with a new Wolfenstein, but I don't think, yeah, I don't think Bethesda has anything in 2021. Sorry, 20, what year are we in? We're in 2020. 2020. I, don't think they, I don't think they have anything for 2021. Fuck this year, you know what I'm saying? Yep. 
I don't think 2021 is the problem. I think we're going to get Halo sometime next year. We have to get Halo sometime. Oh, yeah. I think that's their big fall game. Yeah. Ryan, uh, I think with 16 developer studios, you have to fill in somehow. Like, get something popping within the big releases. You know what they could probably have? So, what if they finally do the Fallout 3 remastered for Xbox? Yeah. Smart. See, yeah, again, it's yeah, stuff like that. Yes. Yeah, like I think they could pull the trigger on that kind of stuff next year. But the question is, is it actually gonna work? Three, yeah. Break. Three will be fine. Okay. I mean, like the only fine the enough for that Bethesda works. game. Yeah, fine for Bethesda game works game, softworks game. And it, yeah, that's another one of problems I had with the most recent Bethesda games that they all just pretty much don't work. Oh, how they break every time you try and play them? Also, I don't appreciate us talking about games services as a value and didn't bring up Stadia. Like, come on, guys. What are we talking about here? What are we talking about here? One of these days. Amazon keeps on giving. Yeah, that's that's probably going to be the next topic we're talking about. I did purchase one game on Stadia. (laughs) What? I have one game purchased on Stadia. Yeah. It's uh, do- I forgot the name of it. It's it's good. It's coming to Switch. So I'm just gonna wait to play it on Switch. It's okay. like a, a fuck. It's that fucking bomber jets jet ski game. That's actually really fucking cool. I forgot the name of it. It's a cool jet skiing game where you play as a bear. It's kind of okay. like Tony Hawk with jet skis. It's really good. <laughs> oh, I saw okay. the ads for this. I do yeah, know what you're I forgot the name of it. Yeah, it's very good. But and like, it, Stadia works good. It just everything like the tech is good. It's just everything else is about Stadia fucking sucks. Jacob Porter, one of these days I will have you on this podcast and we will talk about how great Stadia is. Leave him alone. It's fine. He's fine. No, no. Uh, (laughs) One, he's, you know, as a heterosexual man, he's great to look at, you know. He is great to look at. (laughs) Yeah. I'm looking forward to Jacob Porter's Luna podcast next. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Well, I'll I'll probably, hopefully, fingers crossed, be the co-host. I'm hoping, you know. We'll see. Um back to what i was saying before what do we think sony's response to the bethesda acquisition is going to be are they finally going to pull the trigger with konami and buy the the ip ip yeah ip yeah. sorry i had a brain fart uh ip from them and finally do the silent hills game uh i know last week there was a talk about metal gear solid remastered or mm-hmm. just remade, Make. yeah. Which I'm all for, you know. Yeah, I don't think they purchased the IPs outright, but I do think they they cut a deal. They cut a deal to get Metal Gear exclusive. They have Final Fantasy exclusive, which is huge. Yeah, and like, d- let me ask you a question: Do you think that is a console exclusive, or do you think that it's just an exclusive exclusive? I think it's. it's I think it's console exclusive, but it's coming to PC also. I, I sounded like it's. It didn't say timed. It sounds like I it's didn't. just PlayStation. The other timed games have said timed. Yeah. Yeah. Like after the whole Tomb Raider fucking bullshit, like people have been pretty upfront about time exclusives and stuff. And like it seems like this is just Not PlayStation time. and then eventually PC. Yep. So like between that, this potential Metal Gear stuff and like, goddamn, we've been hearing rumors about Silent Hills forever. Like, if you think you get another Silent Hills exclusively, they don't really need to blow the money to buy the IP or buy the studios. Sony doesn't have that fuck you money like Microsoft has. No. As a company, like, but yeah. Sony, no. Sony doesn't have the money, but Sony has the status of yeah, like that's that too. Like, I don't think they need to do anything because next year we got fucking Horizon and God of War two. Those are two massive statements uh you think mike yes you said god of war 2 i don't think it's god of war 2 i think it's going to be another miles morales no it's god of war 2 probably maybe there's no way that okay. is god of war 2. there's no yeah that, like that has to be a sequel okay right. i also I, I they say 2021 it's they're gonna fucking aim it for you know fall it's coming out in 2022 but like let's dream for 2021 whatever mm-hmm. That's a I'm calling March it November two game. 2021. Yeah. I think that's I'll what make, they say. I'll, I'll <laughs> but... the bets right now. 
<laughs> oh god. What's a plot that's my bet? <laughs> um, Nick, what oh, Brian, go ahead. I think the only thing that Sony needs to uh, worry about, not really worry about, but kind of keep an eye on is the fact that Microsoft now has 20 plus first party studios and they can kind of like release a game every other month later down to like in two or three years. And Sony doesn't really have that. What I think they need to do is start not buying developers, but I think they should really like create their own teams, like how Microsoft did with... um, what is it, the initiative? Yeah. Sony Sony did do that with the new um, San Diego studio that we don't know what they're doing. I think they need to start doing, I think they're doing what, Uncharted? I think uh, they, need to, yeah. they need to start doing like a lot more teams because I mean, they might have what, I think like 11 or 12. I'm not really too sure how many Sony has, but I do know for a fact that Microsoft has 20 plus uh, with all the Bethesda mm-hmm. studios in now. So I think that's the only thing that Sony does need to keep an eye on. See, but that's that's the issue. It's like even going back to that, it, it it goes to the whole devaluing thing of your let's like, all right, you're expecting a banger every single month, and like people's big issue with Nintendo right now is like, even if COVID wasn't a thing, a lot of people were saying this year was kind of weak. When and you look at the first two years of the Switch, those were fantastic years. Like you were getting a banger, but it was every two or three months. So to expect that every single month the only way that's sustainable is like the Netflix model where you're just buying more studios. You're constantly having this rotating flow of content. And then like, it's not giving um, the developers the prestige that they need because no longer they're, you know, Oh, this is the big Sony game. It's just, this is the Sony game for this month. Like you don't really have to wait for the next tentpole title. Yeah, and to kind of piggyback off that, I think it's quality over quantity as well. Like, no offense to any of the Xbox, Microsoft studios, but like, compare Compulsion to any other first party Sony studio, I would take any other first party Sony studio. Or yeah. like something like Obsidian with Grounded. Like, I'm sure Grounded is really fun and fantastic, but it's not like first party Sony level. Definitely not. Yeah. And again, no offense to any of those studios like they're like Double Fine, for example, they're like one of my favorite studios. But like, that's not like what I expect from a first party like banger, you know, like I don't think Psychonauts yes. 2 is going to fucking rock the world. No. So, so I want to jump back to how we were talking about Final Fantasy for a minute. I think that's <laughs> where Sony can really excel is it has the Japanese market and it is and it has friends with the Japanese developers where Xbox hasn't really ever been able to make a foothold there. They sell like crap over there. Their games don't really get put that well out when received over there. I think Sony can really, if it can get a foothold on the Japanese developers, work with people like Konami, give them the money to incentivize them not to just make a pachinko game with, <laughs> with fucking Snake's face on it, but actually make a game. Thing with Silent Hills, work with Sega, work with Atlas, work with all these guys and make those games console exclusive to PlayStation. That's where I think you can succeed. And that's a place where they won't have to spend a lot of money to succeed. Mm -hmm. Uh, Speaking of Xbox and Japanese studios, I do think at some point, as much as I don't want it to happen, because one of their games is one of my favorite games of all time and my game of the generation, uh, I do think Xbox purchases FromSoft. At some point, God, you <laughs> the second podcast I've been on where someone says that. I just don't. I, I just I have a feeling <laughs> for some reason. I don't want it because I want Bloodborne two real bad. Like make Bloodborne two and then fucking buy them. I don't care. Fine, but <laughs> I, don't know, I just have a, a weird feeling about that. I think. Go ahead. I thought the rumor was that Microsoft was going to buy uh, Sega. Sega. <laughs> Sega, Sega. Oh, you Sonic. Just Sonic. <laughs> that, that was just tinfoil. I just want the Sonic. That's it. <laughs> While just, we're making demands, Sega, everything. where the fuck is my Sonic Adventure Three? You know what I'm saying? Where's my Chow Garden? You see, this guy gets it. This guy gets it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. How crazy would it be if Xbox just bought Sonic and decided <laughs> rare, rare? You have the floor. Do what you do best. You know? I yeah. Here's but just Sonic, that's it. Our... Nothing else. Give me Yakuza, a fucking Chow Garden game. <laughs> Give you a what? Give me a fucking Chow Garden game, my dude. Let's go. 
See, we're, t- we're talking chows right now. Are we yeah, talking dude. chows? <laughs> Listen, beginning of the year when we were at PAX East, there was that rumor of the Sonic anniversary 3D collection, like the Mario collection. Yeah. Yep. Give me Sonic Adventure 2 upraised to 4K. Give me my 4K chows. Let's go. I do want chows in 4K. I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Ruben, Ruben do you know what these guys are talking about? I think it's the I don't. Uh, I don't. <laughs> the little, it's the, the little, little uh, sim thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Little blue boys. Like, little little Tamagotchi. Okay, then I don't know what the hell they're talking about. I thought yeah, it was it's like the, a little Tamagotchi, and you just raise it up by like replaying the levels and stuff. It's just Tamagotchi. Okay. okay. You could put them on the Dreamcast save data thing that also looks like a little Dreamcast controller, and take it with you. You could race wow. them. You could have them fight karate. Wasn't that Sega's last console? Yes, it was. Yes. It was. We love the Dreamcast. I stand by the Dreamcast. Do we though? Because if we did, they would have made another <laughs> one. Stadia could be the Dreamcast. Uh, oh, <laughs> okay. All right. Um, before we wrap up the show, does anybody have anything else they want to say about what we've talked about today? Game Pass is cool. Video games are cool. Yeah. That's it. Microsoft should buy Splinter Cell. No, just <laughs> stop. That's, that's what's gonna happen. Okay, so if, if Ubisoft ain't gonna respect the man, just give him away. It's fine. I feel it. Put him up I for adoption. Mm-hmm. Somewhere, someone can go dumpster dive him. Okay, all right. That poor boy. Anybody else? Sam Fisher no. for Fortnite people. Uh, Sam Fisher for actually, Smash. We have Snake. It's we just got time. Minecraft, guy. We're not getting Sam Fisher for Smash. <laughs> Plus, that's just what? Snake. It's a Snake. It's bad Snake. <laughs> an, echo, an, echo, an Echo for Snake. <laughs> no, we don't need yes. an Echo oh, for Snake. He's selling me on it now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I think I've been anything out of proportion. Game Pass is cool. Um, video games. And that's yeah. what we come to today. And one final note about people being pissed on the internet. The Minecraft stuff is cool. Shout out to inclusion in Smash Brothers, yeah. which is a fucking just a fantastic museum of iconic video games. And I can't wait for people to be pissed off when Fortnite eventually closes out this fighter pass. Because there's no oh, way don't fucking you hell. Dare, don't no you way. Dare. Why there's would no you way. get in this? No. Wait, Eco. wait. Hold on. No, no, now okay. it's heard. <laughs> there's no way in fucking hell. That support ends for this game, and the big one of the biggest games of all time is not repped in this game. No fucking way. We're gonna be smashing out the banana bring up boy. Here Mike, I'm yeah. betting you twenty dollars right here, right now. Done. Easy. That Fortnite will never come to. Okay. Not okay. Let me rephrase. I'll it's not gonna be choice. on this game, uh, on this fire pass, or the next, which I assume is the last. No, no, this is the last one. This, this is, is the last, last one. one. We have okay. four more fighters. One of those fighters is Fortnite, and eight of the like each of the skins of the eight skins are different avatars. I'm not buying it. No, sure, twenty, 20 bucks. bucks. Twenty, 20 bucks. bucks right here, right now. Done. Okay. All right. Cool. Any of those four, Sam Fisher? No, Nick. It's not no. Sam Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's an Echo. It <laughs> no, no. Okay. One of those better be Conquer. Save Conquer, my fucking. Oh, if they bring no, back, we're, if we're they not bring getting three, we're not getting three Microsoft reps. No, I know. I guarantee you. One thing I want to say wow. about this whole Minecraft debacle is it's great that he's in the game. I'm not going to argue that. Like, people are mad because they put him in. I think he looks like he plays a bit weird, like from the Smash Bros. style. But yeah, his animations are in, weird. Games history as a whole, and he belongs in games history yeah. as a whole. People My are problem, mad about Steve being in Smash. What it's just watching Miyamoto, not me, I say Miyamoto, Sakurai, Sakurai talk about that today. Sorry. Sakurai, godly Sakurai, talk about Minecraft today. He was not happy to put that in there. He, he was, was defeated. <laughs> you could tell. And there's Wait, something I'm sorry, about what? The, at the what end of the, the trade, there was Sakurai talking, and he was like, but see, I had to make, like, he was just being very passive aggressively warning how he was kind of stymied into putting this character in that he didn't want to. They had to change his whole game style and make yeah. this all work and he it wasn't a character he wanted in his game yeah which makes sense nintendo come to him with like you put this in it's the biggest game in the planet uh it makes sense hence fortnite being in this game eventually i just 
<laughs> I think he gave up here so he can have his weirder characters that he enjoys. Like, there's it's, nothing better than watching him talk. He about said Final that Club. all this was up to Nintendo. This fighter pass was up to Nintendo. Nintendo wants Fortnite in this fucking game. <laughs> I don't see game, it. I, wasn't the Switch version one of the last ones? For Fortnite, it was also one of the biggest ones. <laughs> the game fucking blew up on Switch. Yes, it did. did. Makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. How does it play on Switch? It plays great. I, that's how I got into yeah, it. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. Okay. It's like, it's if you want to like have an attempt at a win, like if you're bad at Fortnite, you play on Switch. <laughs> <laughs> I raised my hand. Um, okay, guys. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, Mike, where can people find you? Fucking everywhere, man. Uh, you can find me at MixToundro on Twitter. You can find my video game stuff at KindNYC, KindNYC.com. We do video game streams, live reacts, uh, a lot of fundraising stuff, and all that good stuff. That's at Twitch.tv slash KindNYC. Uh, if you like punk rock music, I play in, a, in an imaginary band called R Wings. That's at R Wings Music, R Wings.bandcamp.com. I'm currently working on a wrapping up a quarantine album that I wrote in the past couple months. Uh, and I think that. that's it. Okay. Hence why my voice is a little scratchy today, because I did a lot of screaming today. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, where could people find you? People can find me everywhere for whatever hot takes I have or whatever I'm talking about at Ryan the Lion 3055 on Twitter, Instagram, and everywhere else on the internet. Uh, Nick. Sorry. Uh, where can people no, you're fine. No, I mean, you're fine. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at that strong nerd, and also on YouTube, which I still yet to not know my username for that. Okay, <laughs> I thought it was that strong nerd. No, nah, I have to. Okay. I have to get like 500 subscribers. Subscribe if you can find it. Yeah. Okay. I'll put. <laughs> you send me the link, and I'll put it in the in the info box. Thanks. Man. Uh, no problem. Vinny, where can people find you? Uh, all the usual places. Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, at Val Vinny, all this fun stuff. You can see me rage at the last few days of Fall Guys before the season switches over. When is that? Uh, Saturday. Oh, Saturday is the last day. So yeah, season I didn't get to 40 yet. Sunday, I guess? Neither have I. I haven't gotten to I, just, I fell off of it, you know? <laughs> yeah, me too. Fuck, uh, I need that trophy. I think I might play a little a play some tonight. We'll see. <laughs> um, you can find me at Pen Conquest on Twitter. I've started to be more active on that I uh, noticed. Could, yeah some yeah. bangers some banger tweets coming out of this guy some real banger tweets but you know thank you guys um you can also find me on instagram at penultimate conquest and some news uh over the next couple weeks we are also making another twitch channel called penultimate plays thank you ryan for that name um we're we decided to do like Pretty much everybody in the group that has been on this podcast, uh, that's like a regular, has decided, well, not all. Some people have decided to just stream under that name, which will be probably like a weekly thing. One person takes every day. Well, one person a day streams for a couple hours. And yeah, so that would be fun to do. Um, thank you once again, guys. Really appreciate you coming on to help me. Mike, thank you very much. Oh, dude, thank you. Now I gotta um, get you on Platform Agnostic. I'll be happy to. Kind of NYC's gaming know. podcast, which I forgot to promote also. Hey, there That's we go. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you guys once again. Uh, last time. Thank you. Have a good night, guys.